So guys, when we go out today, um, we're going to uh, uh, Southeast Brook Falls. We have a, have a brook, and it's moderate angle ice. So the lead climber has to climb and rig the protection in the route. The lead climber screws this into the ice, clips that in. This is this is yeah. your this is your lifeline, so you really yeah. take care of it. All these things factor in, so you the boys that are running are better better know what they're doing, yeah. Yeah. Good, good, Paul. You got strength there. That's good. That's it. Good job. Because we're we're basically we're confronting fear here. That's it. Yeah. Got you. I got you, man. And it's dressed up as climbing, but we're going to show you a way, um, technically to sort of keep fear in check so you can have a good challenge. Okay, here. And, and work in a safe environment. You got toilet paper up there? Newfoundland Sportsman with Dwight Blackwood and Paul Amundsen. Brought to you by your Newfoundland Toyota dealers. Play it smart. Get Toyota quality priced right. These local Arctic Cat dealers. Arctic Cat, world-class snowmobiles. Air Labrador. For convenience, comfort, and service, this is your airline. And Action Toy Store, toys for the outdoor motoring enthusiast. Today, we follow Dwight and Paul as they attend a class at the Fundy Rock and Ice Climbing School in Rocky Harbor, Newfoundland. Under the instruction of expert climber Paul Fenton, they'll tackle an ice wall at Southeast Brook Falls in Grossmore National Park. Here they will confront nature's elements, demanding physical challenge, and Year, in an area which is quickly gaining a reputation as a world-class climbing site. For waterfall ice climbing, um, you need a, a technical uh, uh, mountaineering boot, okay? That's a very rigid boot, similar to a ski boot. Again, it's like anything, guys. Uh, climbing, you need really good equipment, and, uh, and, and when it comes to uh, uh, your crampons and what keeps you on the wall. There's not much room for uh, for uh, saving dollars. So the average, you got to yeah. shop around, but the average is uh, yeah between 2,500 and 5,000 to get uh, involved fully. So this is a, a sit harness, mm -hmm. and um, pretty straightforward. You have gear loops, webbing, uh, very similar to your, the seat belt in your car. So here you have a uh, a uh, 165 feet or 50 meters of 11 millimeter in diameter. Um, high stretch climbing rope. Okay. It looks almost like a uh, bungee cord. Well, Dwight, that's 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 a pretty uh, pretty good analogy because, in essence, um, that's that's the way it, it works. High stretch or dynamic, as we say. Um, it uh, when you fall and the fall is arrested when you're tied into it, um, energy dissipates and uh, uh, through the uh, rope. So there is a, there is a bungee yeah. eff effect, okay? But it's not as extreme as, as an no, actual bungee, bungee cord. Or, or you probably hit the ground. <laughs> so the guys are here from PEI to take advanced training in our winter skills semester um, program at different levels. So that involves um, aspects of the mountain, different aspects of the mountain, and one of them happens to be ice climbing. And, um, and, and rigging, and, and another thing is rigging, repelling, self-rescue, uh, snow climbing, hazard assessment, um, and critical thinking. So uh, based on the nature of their work and their program in PEI, that they're, they're going to be instructors, and, uh, and they're working with, who knows, some of the boys who wind up being alpine guides here. So um, this is the ground floor, so you're asking, you know, the guys, uh, so you guys so haven't gone up the ice they before? They haven't done ice not before. Yet. Oh, okay, not so yet. we're not the so only ones. So we're going to <laughs> yeah. show them how to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 show them how to do it, Dwight. <laughs> and we won't get into the features of it, but, but what you look for, because there's pockets and holes and so on, 
Um, you don't want to break a crampon point by kicking too hard and rock. Yeah. So we'll clear it and uh, and then the idea is <clears throat> to get good placements when you're front pointing and learn to feel what it feels like when you connect on the ice and then your balance on it so that you stay on, uh, stay, stay on the ice. So a lot of it has to do with balance, footwork, leg work and that's what the, the primary step is before we get into anything else because you're, you're no good to anyone unless you can use these. Okay. It's about con uh, conservation of energy. So if you learn to do place it well, um, you don't want to be kicking there all day when you could do it once to get the job done, yeah. right? Uh, the biggest mistake is you'll have a tendency because you want to climb up there to lift your heel and step too high. So you're going to be doing this, yeah. okay? So you don't want to do that. You want the entry to be at 90 degrees and then drop back and, and sort of rest on it. So when you're in, make a level. that's right, level, shoulder width apart. I want that your pelvis to be into the ice, yeah. okay, and you drop your heels. If I drew a line down through your body, Dwight, um, all your weight would be going right through the balls of your feet, very close to those points. That guy just wants to go all the way up, right? None of this side to side stuff, he says. Oh, don't move your foot. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get a no hands. Paul, you wanna go? We're really wonderful at this. Start over here, Paul. Let's see. This should be good. So there's all these techniques right here. We go. He's not doing too bad. Okay. There. Okay. See the beauty is too, guys. Uh, the the big vertical routes you have the you have uh, elements like this in each of those landlocked fjords, where people can come at an introductory level, have a beautiful time, and and they're climbing in an area like this, and they turn around and there's 2,400 feet of exposure. That's just and and every Every wall is different. As the light moves through the day, they all change. Uh, they all have their own personality, so it's incredible. There's definitely clear the snow away, see what I'm working on. A couple of taps. And then when I make the placement, um, I can just flick it from the wrist. Yeah. And there I am. So I'm in. And, and to take it out, just pop it out. Okay. okay. And that's as far as you put it, what you just did there? Yes, that would, that, with all my other uh, tools in place, I wouldn't exert much more force right. than that. Oh, that was if, me, I'd have it gone into the handle. If instinctively, when you first start, you want to bury it, right? Right, yeah. like that. And I mean, you know, that's in there. Oh, uh, yeah. But the problem... Come back out. It, it is too, Dwight. The yeah. problem is you're going to fight it out. And if you're on the wall, because ideally, right, when you're up there, You want to move, move efficiently. You don't want to waste any more energy than you have to. So that's why skill and technique is really important. The reason I clear the snow is if a rock under there or a bad formation, I could break a pick, and I don't want to do that. Yeah. I usually carry a third. You always carry a third tool. You should anyway. Okay. So you hang off your tools. So that's the the the, the transition is you suspend your weight in the tools to free up your feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you first start learning, and I force you to uh, to use your feet only, um, if I gave you the tools and everything all at once, um, you'd rely more on the tools and forget about your feet, and you wind up with bad we'll technique. See. I think he likes this. <laughs> well, he doesn't get out much. <laughs> Getting braver. Okay, that's high enough, man. Huh? That's high enough. <laughs> You gotta listen to your teacher, right? Come on back. <laughs> well, you, you get a bit cocky with these, you yeah, know? Yeah, I know, yeah. yeah. I know. I felt like I could go right up over. Yeah. If you had sneakers on. Yeah. yeah. You think? Regular bases? Yeah, you start We're getting... We're gonna see yeah. you in the mountains? You start getting cocky with it real quick. Yeah. So this is what I mean, guys, by low, slow this exposure. So if we took you out to the top and put you up there and rigged you, right away, yeah, you're not going to have fun, and you're no. not going to be paying attention to me, no. but so you get the technique, the skill, and then we slowly, take you over there, slowly, you're not going to be small. intimidated by that. Yeah, exactly. Once he gets a taste of something he can accomplish, he's gone. Yeah. You know, not very much you can do with once he gets a taste. <laughs> <laughs> once he gets a taste of something he can do. <laughs> I thought you were going to be nice there for a second. <laughs> I'll not go there, boys. <laughs> The quiet walk in gave Dwight and I time to reflect on our training and to build up our nerve. To us, this might as well have been Mount Everest. After climbing down into the gorge, I had to wonder 
what a guy like me who gets petrified painting the eaves of his house was doing here. Here in Grossmoor National Park in the Long Range, in the landlocked fjords, I can go into one fjord and it would take me five seasons to climb all the classic routes. We're talking 2,600 feet of vertical and there's not just one or two or three, so the density is mind-blowing, mind-blowing. And you don't have that every place and that's what makes this world class. And they made this a world heritage site, they weren't fooling around. As Paul Fenton methodically went through his pre-climb routine, Paul Amundsen, our quick study, was replenishing his energy reserves. By the look of that fella, you'd actually think he was climbing Everest. When you come by a piece of protection, um, as we discussed before, previous, uh, the line coming up to me, you unclip them clip from the carabiner and then clip the other color rope in from below and that's the white yeah. and there we have a running line. So basically I'm taking my line out as I go up and let him, he's in. That's right and yeah. I'm, as you climb I'm taking in the slack. If you fall I've got you from above yeah. and if the fall were to cause a failure, which I doubt it will, um, he's got you from below. He's got the extra. Okay. And don't you forget yeah. to put mine in. <laughs> <laughs> Tune yeah, in next week forget, Paul else, takes the show by himself. Or else the white will be climbing this vertical here and doing the rock on extreme right. Yeah. I'll haul you back down, buddy. I'll I've always pluck. wanted all the scenes. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> I'll pluck on that rope as hard as I can go. <laughs> as you're falling, grab mine. <laughs> once, once we're up there, guys, and uh, you'll wait until he comes up, and then what I'll do is uh, normally you would you could repel it, but I'll lower you off yeah. one at a time, eh? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. This is it, hey? The idea is we're supposed to follow as closely on your steps? Yeah, you won't have much choice. <laughs> For the outdoor enthusiast, Newfoundland and Labrador offers excitement second to none. And the Newfoundland Sportsman magazine brings that excitement home to you. Subscribe now and begin enjoying interesting and informative features with exceptional photography, focusing on every aspect of our great outdoors. Order now and receive six exciting issues a year for the low price of only $21.35. Or subscribe for two years and get 12 issues for only $38.04 and save 25% off newsstand prices. The Newfoundland Sportsman Magazine, outdoors at its best. I'd say I'll have about a half a dozen of those clamps and safety clamps. Well, at least now you can see me now. <laughs> she used to be afraid when I go fishing for the day. Oh, Dwight, you don't want to do that. You don't want to go by yourself. She used to have a heart attack. Well, if she was alive, seeing me go up there, certainly enough for you, I suppose. Well. Give your kids a thrill anyway. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> Probably every uh, 10 feet. Yeah, I guess about every 10 feet or so. Yeah. 
I don't know how high we're going. I guess it depends on how comfortable we feel when we get up there. I go with the top. <laughs> just as well. I mean, you gotta fall from 50 feet. It's just as well to fall from 100 feet. That's right. That's right. No, it's pretty safe at all. Well, you know times. what to say about the fall, isn't it? That the fall of hurts is on the staff. Here. You must be nuts. <laughs> what you wouldn't do, eh? Bit of noise. Bit of fun. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how much fun there is in the optic. Belay is on, Paul! Climb when ready! Alright, I'm climbing! Climb! Seen a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Might be sooner than you think. <laughs> Good, good, Paul. You got strength there. That's good. That's it. Good job. We're with the adventure group in Charlottetown, and uh, we're here to uh, learn our skills uh, and to develop techniques so that we can go back and run a program similar to this. And uh, we hope to have young people coming from Prince Edward Island to Newfoundland. Uh, so that we can uh, build life skills uh, and develop uh, positive uh, uh, programs for youth. You said you're nervous about the roof of your, of your house. This is not the roof of your house, pal. See any? Paul, oh, you see any birds? <laughs> One nest right there. <laughs> okay, stand up there. Well, that side there, I suppose. Okay, here. Oh, Dwight, I almost forgot to tie you on here. Jeez, darn well. <laughs> That's the most important thing of all. <laughs> Reach up there, Paul, and put a good smack into her, boy. <laughs> Getting the toe grips. I get your footy. I'm laughing for you. You're exhausted. Way to go, buddy. You made it. Jeez, not bad at all. I didn't think he was going to have it in him. I thought he'd get probably halfway, or maybe not even that far. But made it all the way. Gotta give him credit. Feel like an eagle first up here. I know he's not tired now. It doesn't look too bad when you're down here looking up, but I'm sure, as we saw when he was going up the face of it, you know, all the ice falling loose and not knowing how to get a grip too proper. It must be difficult. Great. Yeah? Bring us up a Coke when you're coming with you? Yes, boy. I'll bring up a beer for you. Mm -hmm. right. You ready? Yeah. Time when ready. <laughs> Here goes nothing. He can make it. I can make it. Come on, Boy. Boy. It's not so bad now. The way I tried to cut some footsteps for you. Hey, Dwight. We're the second crew to ever climb this. It's called a walk in the park. But believe me, 
It ain't like a walk in the park. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, son. Good job. In there. Good. There are many aspects to a mountain, uh, and some of those aspects uh, deal with snow, rock, ice, and it's many different forms. Um, so ice climbing has become a sport of its own, and it comes from mountaineering. The, the beautiful thing you have here in Newfoundland, Western Newfoundland, Gross Morne in particular, in the Long Range Mountains, are you have world-class vertical. What that means is it's the hardest uh, part of a mountain uh, to do. And um, some of us in the sport, that's all we hunt for, are vertical faces with extreme exposure, many different grades of climbs, and you so happen to have world-class climbing here. It's an unknown destination on the world um, uh, market. We're trying to break it in, we're pioneering here, but uh, it will become a mecca uh, in years to come, like Valdez, Alaska, uh, Banff, uh, and many other uh, ice climbing uh, areas uh, in North America and Europe. Thank you very much, Paul. No, this is this is half a handshake. You get the other half on the bottom. I'm No, it's a great sport. You know, it gives you a big, big thrill. I mean, when you're up there and you're looking down and you can see all the beautiful countryside around and you know that you've accomplished something, there's just one big adrenaline rush. But I was looking up most of the ways up and I was looking up most of the ways down. <laughs> you know, you got to trust your equipment too. If you don't trust your equipment, it's just well not to go up there. And I guess the more you go up, the more you trust your equipment. Like coming down that rope first, when he was telling me to lean back, lean back, all I could think of, gee, Paul's after walking on that a double time, a dozen <laughs> times, you know, I might snap, but no, it's, it's, uh, it's good gear. And it's Paul's turn now to come down. There's an entire industry around the world in climbing. Traditional people here have now a new tradition. They have a resource in their backyard that is world class. So every time I see a kid or meet somebody, I see a climber or I see an infield support guide or I see a hotel operator or I see a restaurant owner or I see somebody that has hope and has something to be proud of. And my vision is that there are children in this province today, in this community, that in a few years, right, will be walking tall with the best mountaineers in the world, and they'll cut their teeth here. And they'll do more than cut their teeth because they're sitting on a commodity that people pay big money to travel to do and see.
come back down, you're backing down that, and you're looking over your shoulder. Oh, yeah. And he wants you lean and lean and lean, <laughs> right? Oh, wicked. Got a rush, right? That, that was right. fun. That was a lot of fun. You should come out and try this. I was in a hurry to get up, and I was in a bigger hurry to get down. Off! Newfoundland Sportsman. Brought to you by your Newfoundland Toyota dealers. Play it smart. Get Toyota quality priced right. These local Arctic Cat dealers. Arctic Cat, world-class snowmobiles. Air Labrador, for convenience, comfort, and service, this is your airline. And Action Toy Store, toys for the outdoor motoring enthusiast. While on the west coast of Newfoundland, cast and crew of Newfoundland Sportsman stayed at Marble Mountain Cabins. Marble Mountain Cabins, the best at the base. I still can't usually wait to get off work and come home, just go for a ride for an hour, forget about everything, or even on Sunday, just pack everything up and hit for the hills, just go for a ride. Machine these now. <laughs> oh, baby, no, yeah. Right ball, boy. <laughs> Untied. Solid ground. <laughs> <laughs> 